Hey everyone, Joanne from Art Resin here, and today I'm joined by artist Yolanda Fernandez, uh, who's based here in Toronto. So Yolanda, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and about your artwork? Thank you for having me. Yeah. So I am a mixed media artist, and I've been working with resin for quite a few years now, uh, full time for the last two years. And I create flow art pieces on um, trays, wood panels, things like that, and also home decor. Awesome. So today we're so lucky. Yolanda is going to be walking us through how to create a piece of flow art. So Yolanda, what are we going to be doing today? So we're going to try to replicate something like this on this tray and we're also going to be pouring on this panel here. Awesome. Yeah. Let's get started. So we're going to be using art resin with the resin tins to create this piece here. I'm going to show you guys how I mix up the resin, how I use these gorgeous pigments to create the piece. So let's get started. So as usual, we're going to do equal parts resin and hardener. And I'm using these little cups here. There we go. And we're going to mix these two together. Doesn't matter which one goes into each, but make sure that you do scrape the sides and get all of the equal parts together. And now we're gonna start mixing. You wanna keep mixing until it's completely clear. It's super important. Mixing is always that part that I always make sure to get right. So you wanna keep stirring at least three minutes minimum for a smaller batch like this, but for a piece that's larger, like the one behind me, you wanna keep stirring until it's completely clear. It's not gonna be translucent or foggy, etc. And when you're stirring, you wanna make sure that you are scraping the sides of the cup as often and the stick to make sure that it is well mixed together. Okay, so we're done mixing our resin. We're gonna pour it into these little cups here so that we can start adding the resin tints. Go. I like to start with just pouring a little bit of resin into the cups and working out my colors and then adding a little bit more resin to the cups as we go along. So you wanna shake the bottle very well because the colors do separate if they've been sitting there for a while. Um, and then you wanna use few drops, less is more because they're very, very saturated and very pigmented. Two drops, maybe three, just to start off with. And we're gonna mix it. And I'm gonna add a drop of white. And I'm gonna just do one drop to start off with. And I'll see if I need more. But I add the white to soften the turquoise and it also changes the opacity, if you see. It's less translucent now. And you can check the transparency off the color, off your resin, by just looking at the stick or pushing it up against the side. This is pretty translucent, so I wanna make it more opaque. So I'm gonna add a little bit more, but again, that's why you wanna go slowly. So you're gonna just keep mixing the colors together. And that's the great part about using resin tint is that you get to customize the colors however you want, and you get to play. You get to play with the colors I find it very therapeutic to just stand here and mix different concoctions of resin tint and resin and see what I come up with because that's the joy of creating and it's the best part of it for me. And the next color after that is gonna be the resin tint white so that we can get some negative space going. So when you are mixing your colors and getting them ready for your piece, you wanna keep in mind the background that you're working with. So if you had a piece like that one at the back and it was a wood panel that was already white, you can get away with your colors being a little bit more translucent for some depth. If you're working with a tray, in this case, that's a goldish brass color, you wanna make them more um, opaque, just so that you don't see the background. So that's something to keep in mind when you're working. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next color because I think I've mixed this very well. And we're gonna start off with the blue and the black to get a navy color going. It's a gorgeous, deep blue, but I'm gonna deepen it by adding a little bit of the Art Resin Black. And again, we're gonna make sure that we really work the color into the resin. With the resin tints, you wanna make sure that they are very well mixed into the resin. Because they are oil-based, they need to get emulsified into the resin. And because it's oil-based, you can take a torch to it and make sure that your work doesn't light up and you know catch on fire and you keep your eyebrows. If you love your eyebrows, use resin tint because it's oil-based. Okay, sorry. So we have our colors mixed up, so we're good to pour now. 
So I needed to mix up a little bit more of the navy and the white, so that's what I've gone ahead and done. And while I'm mixing up the colors, um, I often get asked when I am doing the flow art pieces, how do you know when a piece is done? It's a tricky question, and I think you sort of do and you sort of don't. There's always pieces that you want to keep working on constantly. Like the piece at the back of me, when I first finished it, I wasn't 100% happy with it. I felt like I could make a few more changes to it, but I learned to let it go. And once I took it to the art show, um, my audience loved it. They absolutely loved it and did not see the flaws that I was obsessing about. So I don't think you 100% know if a piece is done or not, but walk away from it. <laughs> All of the flaws that we see is because we're overanalyzing it and we're staring at the piece. And when somebody sees it with fresh eyes and has never seen your work before, they're going to love it. And you just have to have confidence in your work and in yourself. So I have all of my colors mixed up and here comes the fun part. We get to now pour it all on this tray and make some art. So I'm gonna start off with the navy blue color that we poured and mixed. And we're gonna pour it on this side of the tray just because I like to try to compose the piece before pouring it. I think it's a great idea to sort of have some sort of idea. Just the same way we plan out the colors, plan out the way you're gonna lay them down and in this case, I am going to be doing the blue on this side and I'm going to place the white on the opposite side. And then we're going to start moving the color around. And then I'm going to note that I don't have enough resin and need to mix more. So I poured some of the white and some of the navy blue in, and in the balance of the cup, I've added a little bit more pigment to it so that when I pour it on top, I can get a marbled effect. I'm just gonna move it around with a stick and let it sort of do its magic. We're gonna go back and add more of the navy blue. And again, you can see the difference in opacity between the two of them. It just helps add some depth with layering both the colors. So that looks perfect. Okay, so we're gonna do the turquoise color. So I poured a bit of it on the tray and a bit of it onto the dark blue, just so that it mixes up a little bit, but not too much because we're gonna control how much they get mixed up by using our little tool. So that looks good. Let's move on to the next color. And we're gonna lay that color right down the middle. Just move it around. You don't need too much. If you over pour the resin into the tray, you're going to have all the colors really mix into each other and get muddy. So you want to make sure that you don't have too much resin in there. All right, so we're done pouring all of the colors and now we're going to torch the resin to get all the bubbles out. So once we have all of the bubbles out of your piece, I'm just gonna make sure that there aren't any more. We're gonna use a little spatula or any little stick, something with a narrow width, and we're gonna create a movement and sort of a design with it. The important part of this step is that you wanna make sure that your uh, resin is a little bit cured. That's my tip. Um, if your uh, resin is freshly mixed and very fluid, it tends to get very muddy and you're not going to be able to keep the shape or design in your piece. So I would recommend if you are trying to get a really nice cells or movement in your piece, let your resin cure just a little bit so it's a little bit on the harder or thick thicker side and then start moving it with any device that you have that's similar to this. You can try out different things. I've tried out tons of different utensils from the kitchen or at home or around, whatever worked, and this one worked for me. So you find what works for you, and we'll go ahead and start mixing it up. My sick. So when I'm composing it, and as I mentioned, we were composing the colors and laying them out, the other option is that when you have finished pouring it, and if you don't like the, the absolute shape of it, you can move the piece around to sort of get the angle that you want to work with before you start using your tool. So in this case, I love the way it's laid out. I don't think there's anything that I need to change of it. If it was, then I'd move it, but I think I'm ready to start with it. So we are gonna start using the little tool and sort of make a shape in it. It's very organic. It's where you have fun and play with the resin. I like to sort of create a shape and then 
Whatever is left in there with the white, I'm not too worried about it because I like to carry on the color into the other parts. So I'm gonna just drag it. You don't have to be too delicate by just skimming the top of it. I like mixing the colors in and going a little bit deeper because that's how you get the colors to mix and get some really cool cells. I do take my time with it, so you'll notice that I'm not going too fast. And I do like to have the leftover color that's on it to sort of just move it around. I like creating some wavy patterns. And again, because the resin has cured for a little bit, you'll notice that it's not getting too muddy. It's keeping the shape that I'm pushing into. And there we go. So I'm gonna do one more pass with the torch. And again, because it's an oil-based pigment, nothing to worry about. We're good. So we're all done with this piece. I'm gonna move it over and let it sit to cure somewhere safely. And we're gonna work on the next piece on the wood panel and I'm gonna get Joanne to help me out with that. So I found Joanne. You did. And we are gonna be working on these two panels. So we have a panel that's 12 by 12 and it has a little bit of a wall that can hold your resin and works very well for doing flow art. And then I have the regular panel, which you can also use a little made up wall by using tape. So I've done the three sides over here and I'm gonna do the fourth one here. That's such a clever idea. You've made your own kind of lip around yeah. that. Yeah. So it's different options on what's available in your art store. So you can go with either or. I'm gonna take these gloves off because they don't work very well <laughs> when you're taping. That was an excellent tip for you guys. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna just tape up a little bit of a wall. There we go. And you're using painter's tape. Yes. Um, but can you use like sheaving tape, like tuck tape as well? Tuck or? tape works great. Um, whatever you have available, just something that's gonna stay nice and tight onto the walls. So I'm using this little tool again to sort of press the tape against the walls to make sure that it's nice and tight and that the resin is not gonna seep through. Um, and you wanna make sure that way you don't have any drips and it'll be nice and perfect. Perfect. So Joanne has gone ahead and mixed some gorgeous colors using mm -hmm. resin tint. You want to tell us about the colors you chose? Yeah, just uh, I love rose gold, you may know. <laughs> so I've got my pinks and gold and white here. Um, and yeah, I really love this palette. Awesome. So I'm excited. All right, I'm going to get my gloves on. Well, I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit nervous, Yolanda. Oh. You're like the master of doing this. So it, it's one of those things, it looks really easy, but yeah. actually to do it, it's it takes a bit of, um, you know, Definitely, strategy, yeah. doesn't it? It does take a lot of strategy, but it's a lot of fun. And mm -hmm. it's just playing with it. I mean, I learned a lot of what I'm doing by just playing and yes. not being worried about the outcome. Exactly. And that's what it's about. So yeah, it's we're gonna, the best way to learn. Yeah. yeah Let's sure. get started. Okay, good. All right. So what color are you planning on going with first? Do you have any um, intention? You know what? I'm going to I'm gonna follow your lead and go with white if you're going to okay, pour the white perfect. first. I'm just going to mirror you. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to be pouring the white in this corner. Okay. Off my piece. There we go. And again, because we have the little walls, we don't have to be too worried about it mm -hmm. pouring over. I guess just by tilting it, you almost don't even need to use a spreader. You don't need to use a spreader if you're tilting it. And because it's freshly mixed resin, it's so fluid mm -hmm. and so easy to move around. So this is the best time to move your piece if you want to, yeah. to get a good shape going. So I'm going to be pouring the purple color into this corner. I'm just going to move it around so I can help it to the, the edges here. I love this pearl pink too. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's so satisfying <laughs> doing this. Okay, so okay, the next, next color that I am using is this turquoisey teal. Okay, so I'm gonna use my, I don't know what this is. It's kind of my rosy gold color it's here. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna go with, hmm, let's do it right up against the purple because I think that would look beautiful. It's great, your rose gold really goes with the pink too mm -hmm. really well. Yeah. 
So now when you put the two colors side by side, are you um, intentionally blending them or are you just letting them kind of do their thing? You want to let them just do their thing and sort of sit beside each other and then we're going to get them to mingle mm -hmm. afterwards when we have our little tools that we're going to use. So okay. right now we're just laying it down in a ribbon fashion and then we'll help them mingle after. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. Alrighty. Last one. Yes. So you're doing your gold, oh, beautiful, yep. and I'm doing a silver. So we're gonna swish around the little metallic colors here and... Are you filling up all the space? I am gonna fill up okay. all of the space. <laughs> all of it. I'm doing whatever you do. <laughs> yes. I'm not gonna to worry too much about the white spaces that I have in there because they will all work out once we start moving the colors around. Okay. So I'm just gonna tap it a little bit. The reason I tap it is just to help the self-leveling part about it. Oh, I see. Yeah, so yours. tap it on the... Yeah, you can yeah. tap it this way and if you notice, the, the little white spaces that I had are already closing up. Versus trying to move it, because if I try to move it right now, we're gonna lose the shape that we've tried mm. to create with okay. it. Um, and it might fall over the edges too, so. I just try to tap it, and there we go. Space is closed like magic. So I've got some really cool cell action happening here, but I seem to have lost my rose gold a little bit. Does that matter? It doesn't matter too much because I can sort of see that it's underneath. So <laughs> when we start moving things around, you'll have a nice integration of it. So okay. it sometimes happens when the colors are moving around, but nothing to worry about. We're going to fix that soon. Okay, perfect. Good. And now we're going to torch the resin. So we're going to give this a light torch. So we've let our pieces sit for about 15 minutes or so and we've just come back and I have the most amazing cell action happening here. I absolutely love it. I don't want to touch it. <laughs> so, I know. And most people want to stop at mm -hmm. that point, but the reason we let it sit for the last 15 minutes is to let the resin cure a little bit so it gets kind of thick and that way when we do use our tool we're able to get some really great designs. So don't worry about it. I know okay. you want to stop, I know. <laughs> uh, but we're going to move forward okay. and, and do some amazing things. Awesome. I trust you. Awesome. Okay, what do we do next? So we're going to be using this and we're going to be moving the resin around and creating some motion and also blending the colors that we previously did not blend when oh, okay. we were pouring it. Now, if you had started to blend this right after you poured it, mm -hmm. uh, the resin would com continue to level, right? And you'd probably lose all, all of this detail here that you're getting, is that right? Correct. Yeah. So that's why you want to let it cure for a little bit because mm -hmm. it'll hold the design that you're trying to put through. When it's very fluid, it tends to blend in and get very muddy and messy right. and you can't keep the colors exactly to the spots that you want it to be in. All right, so I guess it's my turn now, and now I, I am actually nervous because I really love the cells that are happening here, but I still want to pull out that rose gold that's hidden underneath the pink. So okay. do you have any tips for me? I do, and that's a great point that you bring mm -hmm. up because sometimes you'll get a really beautiful organic piece right off the bat mm -hmm. and you don't want to move it around. So you, that's why this is so great because now that it's halfway cured and it's solid or like getting solid, mm -hmm. you can start controlling your movement with okay. this and you can work around it. So if you want to just move the top part and specifically the bottom part and try to maintain that, you can have more control okay. with this. So give it a try. All right. It's going to be great. I love this tool and I like using um, plastic takeout knives as well, but this is better because it's a bit broader, so yes. it, yeah, mm -hmm. you can do more with it. Absolutely. Yeah. The opportunities are endless with using whatever you have in your home mm -hmm. um, to try, try to create something more unique and the patterns and et cetera will always change based on what you're using. Yeah. But yeah. There's so many different effects you can get with just your everyday tool. Absolutely. So I think the biggest takeaway is that you can use whatever tool you want as long as the resin is set uh, or started to cure because the thicker it is, the just easier it is to manipulate. Definitely. Right? Yeah, for sure. All right. I think I'm going to call this done. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Okay. So what's next then? So gun we're going to gun it one more time with okay. the, the torch and that's it and we're going to let it sit and cure. Wonderful. All yours. Thank you. Great, so we're all done. Awesome. So what are you gonna do with the tape? So I'm gonna give it a few hours so that I can soft cure mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna take the tape off while it's still tacky, being very careful not to touch the top of the piece. Um, but the reason I like to take the tape off early on is that um, you'll get a nice doming effect naturally as the resin is still soft. 
Okay. So, and it's also easier to take the tape off at that point. So right. you just have to be very cautious and careful while doing it, but you get a great doming effect. Awesome. So would it be like sort of the four hour mark or? Four to six. Four to six. Usually. Yes. And you can just test it and sort of see the sides if you have any drip offs to see whether how tacky it is. You can go based on that. Awesome. But otherwise you're all set. We just have to put these guys away, let them cure, and yeah. we'll come back tomorrow and have a look at what we have. Perfect. We'll see you tomorrow. So we're back and the pieces have cured, so we're going to have a look at them. Um, the first one is the tray and as you can see it turned out beautiful. I'm so happy with the piece. Um, the colors are still vibrant, they've stayed exactly where they need to be. All of the designs that I created with the fine lines are there, the control is there. Um, the tints that I use for the bronze match so perfectly with the tray, it's just, it's gorgeous. I absolutely love how this piece turned out um, and with this piece. It's vibrant. The colors are beautiful. You guys already know that I love this color. Um, the purples with the turquoise and the silver, great combination. And again, you can see all of the colors stayed exactly where they were from last night. So here we have Joanne's piece. Not as good as my piece, but she did follow instructions and it is beautiful. Uh, but I would like to thank Joanne and the Art Resin team for having me here to create these gorgeous pieces for you guys. And hopefully this helps you create your own resin flow art pieces using resin tints. Um, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.